Let's go ahead and get started with news for the day. Authorities in Western Kentucky are trying to figure out what led a 15 year old student to carry out a deadly shooting at his high school. Officials say the teenager who has not been identified walked into Marshall County High School Tuesday morning and used a handgun to shoot randomly. The suspect is in police custody. He faces charges of murder and attempted murder. And former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nassar could be sentenced today on sexual assault charges. For about a week now, more than 100 of Nassar's victims have testified about his abuse in court. The 54-year-old has already been sentenced to 60 years in prison for federal child pornography charges. Less than one year into his tenure, the Montana State Prison Warden has been fired. This comes just 10 months after Warden Michael Fletcher was appointed to the job in Deer Lodge. The department has refused to give a reason for Fletcher's termination, saying it's a confidential matter, but they did mention it comes before the end of his 12-month probationary period. MTN was able to confirm the Montana Department of Labor and Industry received an official complaint on the warden's office last year but we have not received the documents detailing the complaint. The Department of Corrections said Fletcher will be replaced by an interim warden, Jim Salmonson, who is an associate warden at the prison. Authorities confirm a Billings man was killed after an incident at a Southside construction site. The Yellowstone County Coroner's Office identifies the victim as 39-year-old David Shepard. Fisher Construction is overseeing the work at South 29th Street and 1st Avenue South. On its Facebook page, the company states it's assisting with the investigation but cannot provide details at this time. Shepard's cause of his death will be determined in an autopsy, which is scheduled to take place today. A Billings man connected to a deadly shooting could spend up to 30 years in prison. 38-year-old Ross Breeshears pleaded guilty to deliberate homicide for the 2015 murder of Clinton Old Bull. His guilty plea came days after co-defendant Garrett Crandell was sentenced to the Montana State Hospital. Breeshears and Crandell went to the home on North 24th Street with the intent to rob a woman of methamphetamine. When Breeshears and Crandell knocked on the door, Old Bull answered and was shot moments later. Witnesses initially pinned the murder on Crandell, but prosecutors say the evidence point to Bree Shears as the one who pulled the trigger. Bree Shears sentencing is set for March. Members of the Coal Strip community gathered to discuss the city's future and what will happen after half of the Coal Strip power complex closes down. Units 1 and 2 face a shutdown in just four years. State Senator Dwayne Anke arranged Tuesday's informal meeting among Coal Strip community leaders to explore ideas on how to use the $10 million in community impact funds set aside by Puget Sound Energy. The energy company owns half of plants 1 and 2 and has agreed to put money aside to help Rosebud County, the city and region transition to its new future. Next Monday, Governor Steve Bullock and Attorney General Tim Fox will be in Coal Strip to convene the first meeting of the Coal Strip Advisory Group. It will be the first of many discussions to address the region's changing economic landscape. Former Yellowstone County judge and Republican candidate for U.S. Senate Russ Fagg is sharing his first campaign finance report. So far, his campaign has collected $615,000. He says 80% of that money comes from individual Montanans. It's a one-on-one -on -one business. It's meeting as many people as you can, explaining your vision for the American dream. And can you help me try to turn this country around? And that's really what it is. It's just meeting people, building a relationship, and then asking them, would you help in moving this campaign forward? Fag is one of six Republicans vying to challenge U.S. Senator John Tester this year. Tester had raised nearly $8 million for his re-election effort through September 30th, and at that time had $5.4 million remaining in his campaign fund. The Fag campaign says his fundraising offers a clear contrast to Tester, who's getting most of his money from outside the state. Fag is the first Republican in the race to report his fundraising for the last three months of 2017. Late Tuesday, current Montana State 
State Auditor Matt Rosendale released his funding totaling $760,000. The other candidates must report by January 31st. Meanwhile, four attorneys are in the running to fill the seat vacated by Yellowstone County District Court Judge Ingrid Gustafson, who is now appointed to the Montana Supreme Court. The finalists are Colette Davies, Jessica Fair, and Annalisha Pianca, all of Billings, and Matthew Erickson of Missoula. Davies is an attorney for a Billings law firm, but served as a municipal judge for the city from 2005 to 2010. Fair is currently employed with a local law firm, but previously served as assistant U.S. attorney for Montana. Pianca has served as a public defender here in Billings since 2013, and Erickson is the director of legal services for a debt collection agency. He previously served as interim mineral county attorney and deputy county attorney for Stillwater County. The phrase fake news is used daily in print, on TV, and on social media. A panel of local news experts weighed in on how those words have changed our country. Tuesday night's panel at the Billings Public Library agreed fake news, its perception and use, isn't getting any better, but there are solutions. Fake news is used to describe completely made up stories, as well as stories that readers or viewers don't like despite the accuracy. The solution, more civil community conversation. We have a conversation and we make sure that we keep talking about uh, our sources of information, where, where we're getting our information. We have discourse and dialogue and we have disagreements and we have heated arguments about things, but we're talking. And I think probably the best thing we can do is to make sure that we, we keep some kind of civil conversation going about this. And I think if we can restore our civil society fake news will disappear because it is the lack of confidence in each other as citizens that generates the conditions for fake news we haven't figured out how to quite incorporate journalism as a as a value i mean we value it but as something that we see as if, if this disappears we are less uh, of a community less of a state Panelists suggest reading a lot and staying informed is the only way to recognize fake news. Also in downtown Billings last night, a movie filmed in Ennis, Montana was featured on the silver screen at the Babcock Theater with both its star and director in attendance. Mr. Bill Pullman and Ryan Moshe give them a round of applause for the night. The Ballad of Lefty Brown, an action-packed western, stars Bill Pullman. Pullman, along with the film's director, discussed the movie and answered questions from the sold-out audience. The film is about cowboy Lefty Brown, who witnesses the murder of his longtime partner and then sets out to find the killers and avenge his friend's death. The ballad will begin special screenings in other parts of Montana and can be found to rent on demand. Country music fans will be marking their calendar for September 14th. Luke Bryan is coming to the Magic City. On Bryan's website, he announced an extended tour of What Makes You Country and will play at the Rimrock Auto Arena. Metro Park officials have not commented on the tour announcement. Bryan is an award-winning singer-songwriter and has sold more than 7 million albums worldwide. Ray Massey with Metro Park says tickets have not gone on sale yet, and if you see websites selling them, they're fraudulent and cannot get you into this show. Brett, are you a Luke Bryan fan? I am a big Luke Bryan fan. You you come across as uh, the country girl, shake it for me type of... Do I? Just kidding. No, you don't. He has so many good hits, though. I was just looking at a list of them. I'm like, I know a lot of them. This might be a fun concert to go to. Oh, it, uh, it'd be a fun concert. Uh, Luke Bryan is uh, one of the outstanding uh, country artists uh, of our time right now. He is. And uh, so let's look forward to picking up some tickets for that, shall we? Yeah. Well, I came up with a new version of his song, Weatherman Point at the Map for Me. How about that? <laughs> you like that one? Ah, there you go. I can 